show is Hello, on. Hello, everybody. Man, you know what? It, it doesn't feel... It feels like it's been a really long time since we've done a show. I have missed yes. doing it last week. Yes. Yeah. But it's good to be back in the swing of things. It is. A lot of things to talk about. We're going to have a fun show, I think. Are we going to be serious? You know what? I think no. we'll just be us tonight. Okay. No serious. We'll no just serious. be us. Yeah. Okay. Some just, seriousness. Yeah. But hey, I do want to thank everybody that's been contacting us about when, when the show... Um, that enjoys listening to the show. I, I really sincerely appreciate everybody listening. And, you know, I, I agree we need to be serious sometimes and really give everybody what they want and also be ourselves, too. we got to find that balance. And I think that balance is something that we would probably need to work on on a daily basis. Yeah, I things. mean, it's definitely a balance. Like, you really got to be happy with what <laughs> you're doing with yourself first and foremost because everybody's going to want something different. Yeah. <laughs> And I think we all can. We all kind of feed off of each other's energy, and we also feed off of each other. If somebody's treading in water. We'll, we're like sharks, and we attack. Yes, and that's not bad. always the best oh, thing. David, good. we're sorry. We love you, man. Oh, and we appreciate oh. you. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for dinner tonight. Yes, yeah, strawberry much. cake was fabulous. Yes, we had. You know, the front porch should uh, sponsor. Our they show. really should show. sponsor our show. They so absolutely should. should. Yes. <laughs> but I want to say a big shout out to Deborah, who's listening. Paul Sloan. Everybody on my Facebook page that listens to the show and replays it. Also, if you're a new listener and you're catching this from our YouTube and Facebook, this is where you get your radio shows. You know, there was a lot of questions that were brought to my attention this week on how do you stream and how do you listen and where do you go. We record every Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Jacob edit the show and we put it out on our YouTube channel, Midnight at the Crossroads YouTube. And also, we have a Facebook page. Like our Facebook page. Tell friends about the Facebook. And we'll put the radio show where you can click and listen. It's a lot easier. Uh, it's, a, it's a better format. We, we've worked on this for, uh, you know, the past six months. It's easier for our listener to click and listen. And if you have questions and need stuff answered, you can email us or catch us on our personal Facebooks. Yeah, basically YouTube is a perfect vehicle because... We don't have to pay for storage space on a server so that you can download it off the podcast, like off iTunes or something. So for the time being, you know, if we get enough views, we get enough interest, you know, we'll start going down those routes, maybe do like a special live stream one time. But, you know, it, it's, I like it. I like it where it is right at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a good place. It works. And plus it gives me a chance to actually edit which we've never really done before, so everybody can be a little freer because they know that they have that escape button should we say something too messed up. Like if we drop an F-bomb or something like that. <clears throat> no, the F-bomb stays. You're right. It will stay. Just, you know, some personal information was shared that shouldn't have been, like Sean was saying, when we get, you know, into shark mode. Yes. yes. And, you know, it's, it's needed for us. It really it is. I smell blood. It is so. So, where are we going to take our show tonight? You know, it, it's, you know, it, you know, we are we are prepared to be unprepared tonight. So, we I know we're prepared to go a lot of different areas, but we don't have anything lined out to go. So, what, what are we? What what directions do y'all do y'all you guys want to go tonight? Well, I've got like a bunch of stories whenever we want to pull that trigger. Okay. Um, we've got David over there looking at I assume user comments. Uh, yeah, just people that are contacting us and people that are pushing the show right now. We got Suge Knight, who supposedly revealed the true people that shot Pac. Supposedly. Yes. I, supposedly. Because it's Suge Knight, so you can never really be sure. No. Yeah. So, you know, I don't know. But. And he did it at the right time to help promote that movie, too. He sure did, buddy. Along, Is so. he getting a cut off that movie? He's uh, gotta he be. has to. Has to. With the gotta movie. be. Has to. Um. Let's see, we got that, we got the con the McGregor Mayweather fight. I don't know, people keep talking about that. You know what? Here's the thing. It, it is big news. Colin McGregor, USC, Mayweather, Money Mayweather, one of the greatest one of the best boxers of all time. And to me, if you ask my opinion, I think it's gonna be a complete utter mismatch. Mm hmm I mean it's just it, it's a good money fight. It's something a lot of people wanna see. It, it's great interest. But if you're a true boxing fan, the best boxing match fights coming up is Triple G versus Canelo Alvarez. That's that's the fight that you know, and I think that's the fight needs to, that's, that should watch as a boxing. But even me, as a boxing fan, I would love to see Mayweather just smoke 
McGregor because he's UFC. I just I don't see McGregor outboxing him. Man. I don't either. I think Mayweather's going to beat him. Yeah. I mean, he's got basically with the trainer he's got, he's got a few tricks he might be able to pull off to kind of throw Mayweather off balance. Yeah. But then he's going to take a miracle to get through that defense to, to hurt him. And he's got Polly Ma- Ma- Magic Man, Ma- 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 Maglinagi. I can never pronounce his last name good. But it's all right. that but he's odd. a Showtime um, guy, which I've always been a big fan of Polly. And there was really, a really good boxing documentary about Polly when he was getting ready to fight Miguel Cotto. But um, Polly's going to be McGregor's sparring partner. So. Mm-hmm. I will tell you this, I like the way McGregor's setting up his camp. You know, um, how yeah. he's going to do it with his sparring partners and everything. And I, he, he's smart about going about it, but it, it should be interesting. So we'll see. I will see. It might end up being another Pacquiao <laughs> fight. Yeah, yeah. Pacquiao's got a free fight coming on this weekend, I think, on ESPN. He's fighting a guy named Jeff Horn. What happened to Pacquiao? He's old, gotten old. He just he's had his prime and now he's just just like the Rocky movies. A lot of these fighters, which is nothing wrong with them, nothing against them, but once you get to a point, you get money, you get comfort, you get civilized, and it's hard to go back to those places and 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 to get to where you need to be to be. It's hard to be a senator in the Philippines and go box. Yes, exactly. And basketball player in the Philippines and no musician. Yes, him singing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, what is it he don't do there? I don't know. I mean, he does it all. So, but you know what? It, it, he, he's, he's still a talent, and he's, he's a hero. Definitely, definitely. You know, um, there's something Tyrus asked me about something the, the other day, and he asked me, uh, "Do I have any Ouija board stories?" Hmm. Yeah. And, um, and you know, there's a story that we have that that we don't we have never really talked about a lot, you know, and hadn't addressed it or anything like that. We've mentioned a few times, and, and it's something that. It's an experience that Hump and I shared. And basically, it, it came about, we was, I think Hump was 17 and I was 16 years old. We um, we met, we actually met, we went to the movies. I can't remember the movies. We went to the movie theater. We met some girls there by accident. We just kind of met them. And then um, we ended up hanging out with them and talking. And then they started talking to us. Even back then, before it ever got popular, started talking about ghosts and stuff. Yeah, I know you remember it, right? Okay. And then when they got on, they started telling us about their Ouija board. And um, we told them how, what we could, that we should take that Ouija board to the cemetery and we'll show you how to, we could really scare you. So it was me and Hump and these two girls and then um, our friend Justin and our other friend David. Remember? Yep. We went to the cemetery. We piled in. And Let's went, tell them where. It, it, it's, Harrison Road. It's on Harrison Road, but it's in the middle of nowhere. It's the old on where T Tots, old Rufus Payne. It's it's a, a, one of the proper areas, and we went way back in the back. Now we was kids, you know, 16, 17, and we had the thing. And here's the thing, part of the story. We waited until midnight, and exactly at midnight, we got out of the car, went and set the um, set it down. And if everybody's asking, well, what did you tell your parents? Well, we did what normally we do. I told mine I was at Hump's. Hump told his he was at mine's, and we just kind of crossed up yeah. everything. And then the same thing the girls did. And so we was there at the cemetery at midnight, and we was there trying to communicate with something. And I, and as we started communicating, all I can tell you, I remember it, and then I was telling Tyrus, if you think about it, it was really hot that night. It was during the summertime. Smoking hot. It was super hot. And, you know, you had the crickets and the bugs and all everything going on, but everything stopped. You remember? There yes. was no bugs, nothing else. And it was um, on the board, it was actually you and a girl that was doing the board. Mm-hmm. And um, our friend David was standing there, Justin was there, and then there. I was standing there and was around. And you and her was on the ground on the board, and our and David was standing up. And and you tell me if, 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 if my recollection of the story is, is not exactly pretty much how it unfolded. As y'all started to communicate, it started to slide, right? Yes. And as we started, it started to slide. She pulled her hand back and did just typically what you see in the movies or anything else. And I was like, "Are you doing that?" And I remember Hunt moved his hand back and said, "I'm not doing this shit." Yeah. Exact words. And then it moved by itself. By itself. Yeah. And then our friend um, David, that was standing there, if you remember, he, um, you correct me, I don't remember him collapsing. Yeah, no, he but he fell back. He fell straight like back. Something pushed him yes. down. Yes. It, but I remember, remember his leg was almost locked. 
And I remember him going straight back to the ground. It's a wonder his head didn't hit a tombstone or hit Man. something. Yeah. But when he landed on his back, he started having like convulsions, like a seizure, you remember? Yes. We thought we was doing die. So so we loaded him up, right? And this this is everything I'm telling you is absolutely true. Yes. We left that that, that board there on that tombstone. We, we because we got David up, and then we started going to the car. Yeah, and we opened the car door. The car door was shut. The windows was up, and there was a black cat, cat in the car, the car, and it jumped out of the car yes. toward us. We laid David in the back seat of that car, right? And then I, and then um. No, then yeah, Justin got in the driver's seat. Yep. Yeah. You got in the passengers, and I was in the back with David. No, no, you got in the no. Remember, you was in the van, and you and the girls got in the van. That's right. I was in my mom's. Yeah, van. and then you had the girls, right? That's right. Like I should. And then you took the girls home, right? I remember you took yes. the girls home, and you met us where, at, at where David's we, house. Was it David's house or back at Big Mom's house? Oh, it was back at Big Mom's. Big Mom's house yeah. on the airline. That was my grandmother's house, and and at this time we yes. met David back. David never the the guy that fell out. He never. <laughs> we gained consciousness. It was weird. I mean, he was literally like sound asleep. He was breathing, yeah, and you would nudge so him. And here's the thing: you, you remember this, hunt. When you would touch him, he was cold, like a dead person. He was. Matter of fact, I thought you thought he was when dead. When I got back over there, and, and we were like, "Get up, get up!" We were like, "Oh my God, he's dead!" But yeah. he's breathing. So we decided to go from my grandmother, and we took him to his house. Do you yes. remember? And they attended Queen of Mercy, where you attended. Yes. Remember? And his mom, the weird thing about it is that his, one of the things I always stood out in his mom since passed away is that she didn't question it. We, we told her exactly what happened. <clears throat> she knew exactly what was going on. She put him in their car, do you remember, and drove him to Queen of Mercy. Loaded him up. And then, now, people that are listening to the story, this is now about 1.30 in the morning. We're way past midnight. Oh, yeah, easily. We're in the, we're in the middle of the morning. And, and, you know, he carried him, she carried him to Queen of Mercy, yeah. took him to the back. You remember, we followed, took him yes. to that back part, and we don't know what happened from that point on. Nope. But to this day, to this day, he would not talk to us about it. No, never. Matter of fact, I saw him at the YMCA downtown when he was working part-time down there. And uh, that's when we had our other radio shows, and we were really out and doing our thing. And I got... I'd mentioned something, and like he just never wanted to talk about anything. He's totally like, I don't want to talk about it. He would never talk about it. Yeah. And that's that's Good our times. story. That's a Ouija boy. And that's that's a true Ouija boy but, story that happened. But we also got time. another one that I think was very weird. Which one was that? Well, we really test pushed the envelope at Burnett's house in that shed. I was just about to go there. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. I don't really remember why. Oh, don't remember. No. I, I can a set storm it. comes and no, right, a storm I, I, comes I, I, over the house. I'm gonna set it up. <laughs> Ned is moving out of the house, right? Yes. So our plan was to do the radio show inside his house, and he had an outside, uh, it's not a shed, like outside. It is like an insulated air conditioner like shed. A workshop. Yeah. So our plan was that we had a, um, a lady at that time by the name of Shay and Jeremy, and Jake was on the phone, right? Yes. Jake was gonna be on the phone in in, in there with them, right? Right. So I can kind of be the remote, the yeah, radio yes. remote guy, so we could check in on what's going on with them. Yeah, so we lit candles in a complete circle. Mm -hmm. Jake sat outside the circle, and Shay and Jeremy got inside the circle to do the Ouija board. Yep. Yes. And then the rest of us went inside the house, cut the lights out to make it really scary inside the house, yes. and do our show live. That's scary. Scary. Well, as soon as the show kicked off, a storm started. Is that correct? Yes. I'm talking about a storm come out of nowhere. Thunder. A bad storm. Yes. So, Thunder, so what happens inside the house when y'all was in there? We went inside the, the Ouija board session. See, my memory's terrible, but the biggest thing I can remember is that, you know, they start, something starts happening. They start kind of contacting folks. Shay, of course, isn't taking it seriously. Jeremy's doing his best. And it gets to kind of a breaking point. And I think uh, a few of the candles go out, and they're like, ah! Yeah. And they start kind of freaking out. Yeah. And I'm like, calm down. Calm down, fellas. Now, hey, I wasn't in there. And and um, the way Jeremy personally explains it yeah. is that the candles just didn't go out. They literally went out, like, in the circle. Yes, they did. Right. Okay, I remember. And that that and that and, that, and that's they what he says. Like, a few at a time around. Yeah, yeah, that's what he said. It wasn't yeah. like it was a... 
gush that got him, they just kind of went in that right right order all the way around in a circle. Right. And um, right. that that was a really interesting thing. Yes. That's a that's a cool Ouija board. I song. think he still has that one. It's glow in the dark Ouija board. I think that was Jeremy's Ouija board. Was it? I don't remember. I think it was. But that's that was actually we used to do some really fun stuff with the radio show. You know, we did yeah. some live yep. investigations at of uh, Helen's place in Clanton. Remember that yes. radio show? Yep. Where somebody started crying because of late, uh, uh, little ghost girl was holding her hand. Oh, remember God, that? yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. definitely. So I just wanted to, that's, I thought that was something we could kind of talk about and kind of lead to. That's See, that's that's good stuff. That's what folks want to hear about is Ouija boards. You know, David, help me out with this. Led Zeppelin, right? Mm-hmm. Didn't Jimmy Page have some sort of spirit he'd always talk to called Zozo, Z-O-Z-O? Yeah, and that's where that come from. Yeah. You know, if you'll go back to some of the old albums and some of their old symbols and stuff, they had that on there. Yeah, I was wondering about that. So he would talk to Zozo? <laughs> yeah. yeah, now, Jimmy Page is, I mean, he got, he bought Crowley's old house. Yes. Me and David were talking about Aleister Crowley earlier. And, and um, y'all was actually talking about, what, the sex magic or well, the Well, you know, or... Aleister Crowley was big into that. Because he was Aleister Crowley. That's kind of what he did, man. So, so I don't really know much about Aleister Crowley. I know that Pushed sounds... boundaries. See, uh, I'm not prepped on him, but I can kind of give you what I remembered. Yeah. Which is, I think he was born into some kind of money or stature. Uh, I think he went into a war, I think, maybe. And during sort of all that, he was kind of gone on this journey to kind of find himself. And he stumbled into this magical practice. Now, he was originally a member of the Golden Dawn. And the Golden Dawn was all about... Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think it's Hermetic Magic. You know, they were the first ones to kind of come up with the Rider Waite tarot deck we see today. Yeah. Like, that kind of everybody uses. Um, they didn't invent, you know, card reading, obviously. That was been done forever. But they kind of defined it for... You know, everybody, the sim- the s- symbolism. Um, he got, he was really rambunctious with it. He pushed the edges all the time of what was acceptable. Like, they did ritualistic magic. If I'm not mistaken, they did sex magic anyway. But he was, like, going to places. Yeah. Like, he didn't stay inside one sex. Like, there's mm-hmm. different orders of that magic and all that. Which I'm sure David can tell you about. Uh, David, I'm not. I'm not. I'm being. I'm keeping it 100. Oh, I'm, keep, oh, that's what I'm keeping it 100. I'm sure he can tell you <laughs> I'm about. Not, it. I'm not trying to be funny. Explain sex magic. I mean, is, is it basically not? Oh. You know, not knowing the hoodoo culture and so and so. You know, like a menstrual cycle, uh, semen and different things is is, is what, prominently used. What blood and semen? So, and, and, and I know with a lot of satanic ritual abuse and stuff and different um, rituals, things are used at that certain points. When you attack uh, purity or attack innocent okay. or or doing that excitement part, you take that energy and uses it. Use it. Mm-hmm. Is that that's basically what you do with the sex well, magic, right? Well, it's, you can use it as rituals or you know, supposedly religious and spiritual pursuits. But the big thing about uh, sex magic is the uh, the orgasm and the arousal and the energy that's created through that. He's and a, if you think about it, that's Crowley. That's right. I mean, that's absolutely right. That's where that comes from. Um, getting to that heightened state of energy and that arousal part, people that, that are energy, like uh, I call them psychic vampires, they can drain that energy and use it for, you know, different things. A lot of people uh, use a ritual. They make up rituals uh, with candles uh, to perform these. Uh, well, it's all about Mood, atmosphere, that Correct. sort of thing in the ritual. Um, some people like doing it on a full moon. The whole tantric thing yes. where you kind of work yourself up to it. But tantric, but, but people can use that into their own, they can use tantric sex Yeah. I, I, into a ritual form Yeah. for the energy. Yeah. Um, Big, I think, I think the best energy. way sometimes to cleanse people or a person is, is to actually have them naked. <laughs> have a no, I'm serious. Please clarify, sir. 
Okay, okay. Cleanse them as the house. No, well, you I do take a shower that. naked, Sean. No, no, hold on. That's right. If you go back, you have to take a shower naked. Yeah. You have to take a bath naked. Yeah. So if you take a sea salt bath, a milk bath, uh, where they use candles, incense, and you have to cleanse a, a person. Yeah. Sponge bath. And we talk about it all the time. Yeah. You can use that form of magic to cleanse them, but in the purest form, and that has to be unrobed. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're talking about they need to take a bath, or are we talking about they get naked in front of you and you start doing things? No, I'm just saying you can do it as an individual. You can lay there completely naked. All right, all right, all right. I'm a, hey, we're, mate, we're joking, but Hump's it's absolutely clear. right. Some yes. of your own personal ritual cleanses yes. and some of your work, it's best to do with no clothes. I mean, you're absolutely yeah. right with that. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the right way to do it. And then it's easier to cleanse your energy when you're done and to be able to process through. That's that's mm. that's the, that's. Absolutely true. Um, and, and when we say, but I'm gonna tell you, back in the days, I, I would, I could, I never could do it naked, but I would always do it with with, the, with like shorts, correct, and then no drawers and you no can. shirt, you know. Yeah. And, and you can do it that way, but whatever's comfortable to yeah, you and yeah, your body yeah, exactly. and the way you want to do it. So you just now, like you're from now. Now listen, now yeah. people that are listening to the show are probably laughing and, and carrying on, but when we say sex magic, we don't think we're not talking about parlor games and kinky sex. We're talking about re- ritual, occult, uh, I guess, exercises. Yeah, it's rituals. It, it is very, re- you can make it as realistic and ritual as you want to. You can do it in front of a full moon. You can do it, in people are going to say, well, that's kind of like witchcraft. No, it's not. We're in a totally different well, ballpark. Well, okay. uh, hey, David. It's okay, though. Uh, here, here, here's something I think. This whole the whole sex magic naked thing that's pretty prominent in some forms of Wicca now. It but, is. And but here's the thing, Dave. Let's be honest. That's water. I know it depends on how you want to look at that. Well, all Wicca's kind of water. But, but here's the thing. I think in the past we we've given Hump a hard time with the Wiccan and all that stuff. And yeah. but since we're doing a, a good serious show tonight, serious. It, it's serious. to the point is to me that 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 is a Wiccan practice. That that's 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 mm-hmm. part of their magic. And a part of that Wiccan, the magic in that is that is the group being able to do it. That's the part of the power with the energy. You know what I'm saying? You correct me if I'm wrong. With no, it. no, you're right because you got to get to an heightened arousal, like uh, um, being aroused. Yeah. That energy, and, and here's the thing, just like with sex, like real uh, human sex, when you get to the arousal part, that's a lot of energy that you have to use. And you have to manipulate that energy. This is my opinion, that you have to take that energy, and that's how you use the magic part. Uh, here, here, I got a, I got a question for both of you guys, and y'all, 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 and let's ask this: Who do you think has? Do you think there's a difference, or is there a better way to be a Wiccan practitioner, or or? To me, I think it, it's all crosses over now. It's like music, but since we're doing it this okay. way tonight. A Wiccan practitioner, where you do it with a group, or basically a, uh, a person that does it by solitude by themselves. Because to me, a person that does it by himself secretly, quietly, is not really Wiccan. But I, I'm the wrong person to ever be able to put things in, in, in I guess in, in order I, like I, that. Camps, yeah. Yeah, in camps. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump deep in this. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll get, I'll get the back. I think, back. I think if you really, I, I think you should do it individually. I think sometimes with a group, uh, if you if you're trying to do it as a group, it's just like with anything else. With a group that you do, it, I think it ends up deteriorating, falling apart. People got the wrong ulterior motives for doing it, or they're out for their own gain. I think if you do it, and this is my opinion alone, if you do it individually, I guess you get to see the reward. I guess. Because it, it's your responsibility. It, t- it goes back to responsibility. Yeah. What do you think, Jake? All right, well, it, to kind of go back to Sean's question in that, okay, we have to sort of define what we're talking about. So Wicca, people, when they hear it, think, oh, well, Wicca's a religion. W- Wicca's really more of an umbrella term for, uh, like, dozens of different practices. Correct. So... It's, where Sean's saying it crosses over, it absolutely does because Wicca borrows from everything. It really does. It's like you have Diana, what is it, the Diana worship Wicca, you have uh, 
the Nature Worship Wicca, which you know, is probably the most popular, I guess. Uh, you have Wicca where it's where it's solo. You have Wicca where it's with a group. You've got all you've got Druidic Wicca. You've got all kinds of stuff. But it's just modern day paganism. It's all folk magic, basically. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's no different than hoodoo, voodoo. Well, it's it's their own little set things. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? From voodoo to hoodoo mm -hmm. to root magic, sex magic. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like Wicca borrows from everything. So yes, that's why you're seeing so much crossovers. It borrows from that quite heavily. Some practices do, some don't. Well, a lot of it comes from Western Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Way back. That, that's with a lot of the hoodoo and stuff, you know, the folk magic, people think it's automatically going to be the Native American, the, the, the African American, you know, mixed with voodoo, but it actually comes from the European mixes in too with the crossroads and the different stuff and DTs and, and contactants and those levels. It, it mixes in with uh, slave culture, um, the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch pretty heavily, um, and you know, kind of the Germanic side of tradition and some Native American. And that, and that mix just depends on who's doing it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's always usually the primarily those three things, but when we're talking about hoodoo, um, but you also have Christianity in the mix there, too. It's sort of kind of the blanket that covers everything. You know what I mean? Like, you, you would still go to church on Sunday if you were a hoodoo practitioner. Yeah. Oh, that's absolutely. still very important. Oh, you know, that's something. Just like voodoo, really. Hoodoo, yeah, hoodoo, the, the, the Christian part of the hoodoo to me is, 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 is extremely important. You know, and if your faith is not tied into it, and you're, you're, you're using the Bible, using um, psalms, different things like that, it weakens your magic, you know, and the work you do, I mean, in, intensely. And, but I think the way, in my opinion, the way times have, has turned, it's almost seemed like some of the, and I could be wrong, but some of the larger groups, um, I guess you call it the, the covens, the cults, and different things, I mean, wherever you do it, the larger the group work, Yeah. to me it's almost turned a little more sinister just because of the way people are changing. When you start dealing with jealousy, different motives, different reasons, and and, and, it, well, and it's just my opinion. I could be wrong on this. But I'll, this is I'll agree with you. Sin sells. And if you go into people that are attracted to yes. being in the group work of Wicca, you have a certain personality type that will keep showing up, which is people that are kind of rebelling against their Christian background or whatever, what have you, or they're seeking out something that's going to tell them to be okay to be a bad person. Kind of see what I'm saying? You you always have that one bad egg. Yeah. That's yeah, going absolutely. to be like, okay, so when do we kill somebody? Or yeah. you know, when do we? Uh, you know, how do I, how do I do the sex magic? Just trying to get a nut. Yeah. Well, yeah. Then you. It's really perverted down. Yeah, it can be it's easily perversion perverted. at its best. Uh, but that goes back to why uh, you should. You know, it depends on what you want to do. I'm more. Uh, uh, I'd be solitude, my own self. Like, I don't need a group. And Some people do it for to seek attention. I think a lot of folks do both if they're involved in it. They can't. Some people are strict solo. Yeah. But <clears throat> well, well, you can't to do it. You can't fool yourself to this point. If you do it, and you do anything outside yourself, you sometimes gotta let somebody know what you're doing because it does add a little power to your work. So you have to use that outside source sometimes, you know, just knowing that you do it. That's what I'm saying. I think it's a mix of both. I don't think you're ever going to be strictly one or the other. Well, yeah. Because yeah. even if you do group work primarily, there's still going to be times where you have to, you know, do things on your own. Wait, because it's a lifestyle, because you have to do things on your own, such as yes. cleanse your home, cleanse yourself, stay focused. Stay positive in your mind because some people can use it so, per like, the wrong way to where it's perverted down, it's sinned down. And that's not what it's all about. I mean, it's really not. And then you've got those bad apples. Well, see, I think it is. I, I think, you think it's bad? No, no, no. Here's the uh, thing. Oh. Here's the thing. 
you said it's perverted now and it's sin now, right? So, 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 what makes it perversion and sin? When you, when you, when you get into that, to where it's all about self, self uh, gratification, and you want to make it perverted. That you take that that you take like let, let's say the sex magic. Say you were do, you were doing that form, and you were doing it as a group. You are always gonna have that weird guy. Yeah. It's like the old man at the bar looking at you. Yeah. And, and I could see where it it, it gets sin down because then you know they want to take it to a different level. Well, it's all sin though. Uh, uh, depends on how you use it. Oh no, it's all sin. Mm. So you tell me. You tell me. So, so you're telling me that if you're doing sex magic and you and everybody's involved is doing it for 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 a good reason, it's still not sin. See, I don't know. I I, I would never do it with a group. It would be more of an individual, and it's more of a cleansing. <laughs> why it's why do we keep talking about you? I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I, try, I'm not. I'm not trying not to no, interview. We're talking I'm, theory. We're, yeah, we're talking in theory. Uh. <laughs> Oh, David. What? Because here's the thing. I, I'm just saying, I don't, just I don't because, think just I because would he, do it that in a group. But here's setting. the thing. Sin, sin is an everyday part of our life. Absolutely. And we we, all, we're yes. all going to do it. We're all going to fall short, right? And if you're doing a certain, any type of magic, you're not doing all good magic. If you're saying, I, I'm, I'm a white witch and I do all positive Negative. I've never believed that. I, I whatsoever. do not believe in that whatsoever. I don't either. So if you're going to do this stuff, right, you've got to have some sin to be able to do some of those stuff. But hold on, that goes back to what we started at our first radio show. If you're a soldier for God, you have to know both sides, Sean. Uh, uh, here, we go, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. But see, how much of our here's the thing. We keep talking about. We're soldiers. We're doing the work, right? Yeah, and, and I, I, I firmly believe that. But here's the thing. Now, now, if the devil left my ass alone, I the, probably wouldn't do the work no more. Not gonna happen. The devil's, <laughs> but the ne you know, not the gonna devil's never alone. gonna leave us alone. No, so I did that all week. So, so then you have to ask yourself, how much of it is is God keeping things shook up in your life so you'll get get back to work again, or how much of it is the devil doing it? And because you know it's a it's it's a balance, you know. But you know, here's the thing that kills me about Christians. And I'm not I'm not I'm not going there tonight. But I'm just saying they talk they talk negatively about homosexuality, right? Correct. No matter what my opinion is on that, right? That's the exact same sin then than me cheating on my wife. It's adultery. So sin is a sin. Yes. A sin is a sin. You yes. know what I'm saying? You, that mean it is. You can't pick and choose your sins. You cannot pick and, and choose. And people your sins. do that all the time, and it irritates the shit out of me. And we, I've talked about this all week long, with different groups and different people. You can't sin. You can't like say, "Well, I'm going to sin this way, and this is going to be okay for me." And you sin your way, and then I'm going to be like, "Oh, you can't do that." And you know, I was talking to Jake earlier tonight, and you know. Every case I've ever worked, right? Mm -hmm. I have invested a part of my personal life into that case because whatever state of mind I was in at that time period, I brought it. I brought it to that case. And you say, "Well, I'm focused on this case and I'm doing that," but you are. But I hadn't adjusted my. I mean, your energy and what what's happened in your life is, is forwarded to there, right? So. I, I've come to the point where I truly think everything that we've gone through and the things that we've crossed over the years, it's almost like a web of energy and a web of like a, of, of things that's meant to happen along the way. You know what I'm saying? It's all been the process of things rolling that's supposed to happen this way. You jump to these points to get to where you are, right? And, and, and a lot of these points that we've gotten to, there's always other decisions to make and we chose certain directions. So, Every, 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 no matter how deep I am in right now, a lot of it's my fault because of the decisions I made. I, to a certain extent, but you don't think that that's the devil, that's you doing this work, but that's the devil shaking it up for you? I don't know how much good I've done, David. And I, I know, I don't know how Jake feels about it. I know we've talked about we've, we've talked done, about this a couple of times. But I don't times. feel like I've always done as, I don't think I've done as good as I thought I had. 
I don't think Sean Sellers needs the devil to shake his life up. Well, no. I think he does a damn good job on his he own. He does his I do. Own. I really do. And that's the I do. And I admit that. Well, well person, me personally, I think we've done a lot of great work and helped a lot of people. Me personally, I abused it. I took it for granted, and I used it for my own selfish reasons. Well, look, man. And know. I'm okay to say that I did that. So, like, I did a lot of wrong. And I did a lot of selfishness stuff for my own, I guess, my own pleasure. And, you know, that goes back to the pointing fingers. I was out doing good to try to do bad, and, and it does not work that way. Well, okay, as far as good, all that. We've helped a lot of families. If, if we're doing good, if we helped, that's not really, I hate this sounds weird, it's not really our concern. If we did good or not. As long as we did what we were meant to do. With all that we could, that's what we did. You know, I, I, it's ours is to do or die. It's not to wonder why. Yeah, but you know, I, I got it. Here's the thing: I got a text, and I'm just gonna and I and I and I'll share this part. And somebody said, "You're you're you are a great person, a very infectious personality. Personality, love radiates through you. People can't help to be happy when you're around. That's a gift not a lot of humans possess. How right? Long, how long are they on you? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, no, think about it. If that's the case, right? Mm -hmm. And we've helped a lot of people, but, but when I go home, when I'm alone, when we're back here, we are really three lonely, miserable people. Can, in a lot of ways. Can be, yeah. We well, can be. Yeah, we can We be. choose to go to that state. Yeah, it's familiar and it's yeah, exactly. comfortable. It's too. comfortable yeah. for us, Jake. But when we're working and we've got... A purpose. A purpose. We're really good. And like, when we're out and about talking to people about stuff that we truly feel about, because here's the thing, no matter what we might disagree on, on what's out there paranormal-wise, supernatural-wise, UFOs, all this stuff, to me, I think the one thing is that there is a supreme architect of the universe. Absolutely. And that, and that, and that whether it's she that Hunt believes in, <laughs> I'm joking, mm. or he, mm. or no matter what it is, it, I mean, it, it is it is always watching us, right? And, and it's up to us how we grow spiritually and mentally. And when it's up to us how we weather the storms. It, it's up to us how we constantly improve ourselves. And if we're not growing and improving ourselves spiritually, we're dying. And I think so many of us that's listening to the show that's out there, we have chose not to grow. We have taken our, our defeats, our, all of our burdens, our pain, our sorrows, and we decided to stop, and we began to die. Mm -hmm. And once you begin to die off, it's hard to come back. And something that I'm personally going through, something that even during my time of, of reflection and, and coming back to this, is that you almost have to almost like prune a tree. You know how you have to cut off branches mm -hmm. and cut it down some? That's almost where I'm at spiritually, and that's what I'm doing. And you have to regrow again and, 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 and pretty much bear different fruit than you have before. And that's kind of the point that I'm at. I think it's just so important spiritually is to keep growing. And no matter where you are, your age, state, no matter what, you have to keep growing. You have to keep, keep searching for knowledge. And you have to keep searching for that spiritual truth. Because the greatest gift God gives you is free will. And he's not going to take it away from you. And he's given you that for, for a purpose to use. And that's for you to explore and to search for the truth. And you know, we're never going to find the truth, but it, but we, it's our job is to go forward and find it and look. And if we can help people along the way, that's a good thing. But I promise you this, everybody that's, that might say I've helped them over the years, you've helped them, I promise you they've helped me a lot more. And I've never given them the credit they deserve. I think that kind of summarizes, it, it's... The search for truth is way more important than finding truth. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's important that you're on that journey because you learn so much more than you would if you just kind of sat around and didn't explore that within you, that dimension within yourself. Oh yeah, I mean if we sit here, <clears throat> we have spent so much man hours and time in working in this, right? Yes. We have had think if we really think about our experiences, we have experienced lost time. We've had unexplained events happen to us at different locations. We've had the blessings to investigate all over. We've had we've investigated some of the darker cases you can ever imagine. 
We've had um, clients that basically could read our mind telepathically and respond back to us. We've had animals try to come through the window during exorcisms. We've literally seen somebody lay on their, from go, going from one state of flat on their back to a full speed. Mm-hmm. We've um, witnessed full body shadow figures move across. The we, black cloud in the hallway. The, the black darkness. cloud that wrapped David. I've been punched by a full dark shadow <laughs> figure. I mean, these things, you think about these things, and, and over the years we have lost some people that have been through the trenches with us in some of the darker cases you can ever imagine, and we've lost them. They're no longer with us. Well, let me ask you something, Sean. Why are we still here? Why are we three still here doing this? I mean, really, we've been beat up, battered. Well, I think our lives I think, have been ruined. I think when you get to a certain point where we're at in our lives, um, hell don't want you and heaven's not ready for you, so you, there's really nowhere for you to be but right here. Good way to look at it. Um, you know, and I you think still think we got a purpose. Uh-huh. I think, uh, I think, I, I truly think that you, you, you know, I think everybody's listening. Everybody here has a purpose, yeah. and if that purpose is just, it's just one simple thing as it is to, and as a simple thing as to water a flower, whatever it is, you, there's a purpose everybody has, and, it, and no matter how minute it is, it's a purpose, and I think that the purpose of it. It's to us to keep moving forward and keep exploring and seeing whatever it is. You probably never know the lives you'll touch and the things you'll come across over the years. It's you know the the biggest thing I've learned in doing any of this is that you have to be okay with not knowing. You yeah. have to you have That's to really one, Jay. you really have to find find it within yourself to accept that there's some things you're not gonna know. You're not gonna find out. Like, otherwise, people just get obsessed with it and it kills them. Yes, that's the truth. If you really go about it seriously and you're like, "Well, I really want to know about this," there's a large chance that, and that's why you know I said that thing about the journey to it is sometimes more important than the destination, as far as that goes. Oh yeah. You have to kind of stop and recognize that because. If you're like, I'm going to be the first person that scientifically documents a ghost and pr- pr- proves it to everybody that it's real, real. <laughs> real. 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 It's not gonna that's happen. not going to prove no. to anybody it's no. real, Bob. You know, that's why, you know, that's why I always tell everybody, if you're going to really investigate the paranormal, really dive into it, the best equipment you can have is a pen and paper. Yeah, it's not... Documentation. Your job in this isn't to go out in a group in camo pants and t-shirts and try and take EVPs. That's not your job in this. You know, your would... job is to be the person that listens to people when they think they're going crazy because they don't know what they're doing. Uh, you basically are a counselor yeah. and a journalist. Oh yeah. That's, yeah, you're exactly right. That's what you do. That's what you should be doing anyway. If you're doing anything else, you're wasting people's time. That's the hard truth of it. Yeah, it is. You're either trying to entertain someone, you're in a social club that could be doing more harm than good, and that's something that you really have to concentrate on. Because y'all talk about how many people we've helped. How many people we hurt, bud? (laughs) Wow. David. (laughs) <laughs> I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think we've really hurt no. anybody intentionally. I think the people that we're about I didn't hurt say anything hurt about themselves. intentionally. I didn't say anything about intentionally. <coughs> I don't think we did it on purpose. I say that to make the point that, you know, to basically reinforce what I was saying earlier, you have to be prepared to weather it, to weather the effects of what you're you're going to do, the questions you're going to ask. Oh yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Well, that goes back to also having a spine. Yeah. There's I mean, a lot of people that are spineless now. We live in a spineless society. Fox we live in a very soft society. Fox News. We're not soft. Tucker Carlson. You know. I'm sorry. What were you saying? Fox News. I was no. saying Fox News. A lot. Fox News. Goodness gracious. Because you know me and David are going to get in that old argument about how David watches too much Fox News and he believes the narrative. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm to the point now where I don't watch any news because it's all bullshit. 
yeah. Fox News, CNN, all the news. Every bit of it. How can we have, and we talked about, we had a conversation this afternoon about this. It's entertaining. How can we have 24-7 news on all these damn channels? It's entertaining. It's, it is. It's no different than professional wrestling. Nope. It's about ratings, money, greed, and what story is going to sell. And shit, they're making up half the stories. Did y'all see where Greta quit unexpectedly? I don't care. I don't know who the hell Greta is. I Greta Van, uh, she had the show, I think, on WS NBC. Oh, really? Like, watching Fox News is the same as watching Maury. I really never watch any of the news things. I don't, I mean, I, I it's might look just at feeds and stuff on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, now, but I, don't twi- really... I get all my news from Twitter. Yeah. Tw- uh, what is it, BBC? Yeah. It's pretty mm-hmm. good. I mean, the internet's completely replacing that avenue, the mainstream avenue of getting anything out. Well, it's it's a uh, news news networks are disappointing. I mean, when we're going to making up news to for ratings and to sell a ticket, you know, I'm not about all that selling ticket shit anyway. Because, <laughs> and I'm not. Just like uh, there's some certain venues in the South East United States that are take ticket venues. They're just there to have you sell something. And for you to buy something, and we talked about it at dinner, and I'm not going to say any names nor the places, but they're ticket venues just like the news is. Like Ticketmaster? No, it's like, no. It, like it's, a, it's no. just like, like open you, up a location yeah. to investigate. Yeah, and you pay oh. a fee, a ticket venue. You were talking about the paranormal. Okay, yeah, basically like yes. uh, buying a ride to the amusement park. Yes, yeah. that's what it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what it's like, Jay. I think a lot of people aren't taking advantage of in that in that aspect. I think a lot of people know that going in and they're fine with it. And they've accepted that and that's the level they want to stay at. How can you be I guess let's say semi professional? Now, now of course there are gonna be some fools in it. And just like anything in life. How can you be serious about it? You might not be. So you're just doing it as novelists, you're just doing it for fun. A lot of people do ghost hunting as fun, yeah. But you ready for this? Do they take the responsibility of what comes with it? Absolutely not. No, and then they wreck some, their, their, their entire lives go to shambles. But it's kind of like the same as, like, you know, you shouldn't ride a motorcycle. You really shouldn't, but people do it. And well, you should wear sometimes, sometimes people get out of it, and sometimes people become Gary Busey. Well, you know, you can you, <laughs> I mean, you know. I, I think there, there's room to, to, to enjoy Paranormal ghost hunting. Yeah. Uh, it's fun. I mean, I, mean, I think there's absolutely... Uh, but it's the exact same it, thing as... Yeah, is it potentially dangerous? Sure, but... It's uh, like going to a nightclub and having unprotected sex every yeah, night. Yeah, yeah, same kind of risk involved there. I mean, that's basically where you're at. Agreed. Yes. Well, Agreed. What else do we have tonight, Mr. J. Bill? Same as, like, having somebody... Never, never mind. Well, we got some folks in New Orleans got beat to sleep. And Rob, Ooh. that was rough. <laughs> I saw that. I yes. saw that. You know, I, you know what? New Orleans, is, the, the thing is, it's a dangerous place. It is. And if anybody ever tells you differently, <laughs> they're, they're, they're lying to you. It's a dangerous place. you got to always be on your P's and Q's. Just before 9 p.m., too, man. Not even good into the night yet. Yep, they're telling a story. Right there on that canal side where it's dangerous. Yeah. Very dangerous. Let's see, we got Rob Lowe claims Bigfoot nearly killed Yes, I, I just read that. <coughs> now, what happened with that? I hadn't yeah, heard that man, story. Man, what is up with your boy, what? Rob Lowe? Here's the thing, it, don't he, but here's the thing. He has a new show, I think, on A&E. Now, yeah. Bigfoot nearly killed him? Well, that's what he's saying. Here, I'll but just read it. also started a new show. I'll just read it. Is it called The Low Encounters? Uh, low Files, maybe? Yeah, something like that. And you, this is a this is a wannabe like has been actor. He's not. He got kind of resurrected with Parks and Rec, but his his recent stuff isn't doing great. No, I don't think. I don't know. I don't follow. Read it. the story. So let me hear what's up with that. Actor Rob Lowe claims he's been up close and personal with a real live Sasquatch, and says the big fella almost killed him. The West Wing and Parks and Rec star made the startling claim in a new interview with Entertainment Weekly as part of a discussion about this new paranormal reality series, The Low Files. Filming the show, Lowe says he had a, a scarily close encounter with a wood ape, a wood ape, in the Ozark <coughs> Mountains of Arkansas. We had an incredible encounter with what locals call the wood ape. Thank you for repeating that. I'm fully 
aware that I sound like a crazy Hollywood kook right now. You say? Oh, David, you're so hard on Rob Lowe. I mean, I what's think your it, hatred for Rob Lowe? What is I he mean, it's just you? crap. What has that beautiful man ever done to you? He's spineless. <laughs> God. He just, uh, based on nothing. Okay. Lowe says he was genuinely terrified by the encounter. I was lying on the ground thinking I was going to be killed. A wood ape is a local Arkansas terminology for what's more commonly known as a Sasquatch or a Bigfoot. A large humanoid ape said to roam remote forest areas in the U.S. looking for beef jerky. Despite occasional unverifiable sightings over the years, the existence of such a creature has never been proven. Lowe describes what happened when the animal approached his camp during filming. So yeah, we're promoting okay. a show here. Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? let me get into this account, and then you can assault yeah, Rob Lowe again. I'm going to. All right, go ahead. We're 100 miles from the nearest town. We spent 45 minutes on the most rugged, brutal mountain trails. It's one in the morning. I'm surrounded by white people. There are a lot of serious former military men with loaded weapons. They're all white. Then something starts approaching our camps that is defying their orders to stop and their warnings that they were armed. Methods. Mm -hmm. Asked if viewers will actually get to see the mythical ape on screen. Of course not. Loy Low was coy. Of course he was. I don't want to oversell as a results-oriented show. Of course you don't. Although we have incredible results, he teased. He also said making the show has had turned him into a staunch believer of ghosts. Our first episode is about poltergeists in one of the most notoriously haunted structures in America. Nothing is staged, nothing is trick cut, no BS. The truth, as they say, is out there. I want to punch that. Can rider. I go ahead and tear this so, so, ass. so what's that location? It does not say. Don't say. The problem I got with all that, Rob Lowe the whole nine. <laughs> One, he's, his grinder show was canceled, of course. He is getting up. Hey, grinder show? Yes, he had a show that they got canceled. It's called the grinder. It's about a lawyer. Yeah. So oh. now, the Low Files, <laughs> which is an A&E's upcom uh, a show they're going to do with him and his sons, he's using what? To sell a ticket. Supernatural and paranormal. Yeah, that's okay. Though. David, that's like getting mad at McDonald's for making you fat. But, but You know exactly well, what you're bullshit. getting into, dude. He's a washed up actor. Who's going to use the paranormal <laughs> and no. ghost story hey, guess what? to sell a fucking ticket? Star Wars, Star Wars isn't real, David. The rage for Rob Lowe is quite concerning. Thick wood. Thick wood. God, no. I, mean, I actually want to bullshit. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch the show oh, now. Really? I do too. David's so mad about it. <laughs> hey, you know, I had a conversation. I was watching. There's a new show. I can't think of the name of it on Animal <laughs> Planet. It's something like called Mongo. Mungo. Mungo. And um, he was looking for like an Argentina Bigfoot. And and basically, I said, I think, I honestly think if you put me in a an area like that, right, <laughs> with five people, I, could, I think I can call a Bigfoot. I'm not sure they could get you out of the bar in Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to be honest. That's here. true. That's true. But But here's the thing. You can't have cameras that lets off any vibrations. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh God. What? My mic just flew up. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. Rob Punch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that microphone just, just wow. went right in his face. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> guys, yeah. I'm not editing that out. Yeah. Hi. Oh, wow. Rob Lowe just punched up in his face. <laughs> <It's dead. laughs> Rob Lowe is a powerful fucking psychic. Yes, he is. He's like, take that, bitch. <laughs> hey, Sean, your show had come out on uh, May the 28th. Uh, it's produced for Animal Planet. Yeah. By Blast Films. And uh, it's got nothing but fantastic <laughs> Oh, it's ratings. a great show. It's, it's fantastic really a good show. Stuff. Oh, they visit sense. more than 90 countries <clears throat> to capture wild, hostile animal environments. They want to explore the myths and legends. Heard within the past 20 years of traveling this world. Yeah. And now, that is an interesting show. Now, speaking of getting punched in the face, have, did y'all see that uh, them, that lady get beat up over cold chicken? Yes. 
And I'm appalled by it, and oh, I would man. love for that cat to come to Montgomery, Alabama. Did you see that dude? Did you see the man the hit his daughter? Yeah. Knocked her off her feet, Jake. It was a horrible j- just jab right in the eye. It took her off her feet. Did you see it? Here's the thing. I no. seen it, and I was enraged. I, I am so angry. I want to donkey punch him in his throat. I think that was the most cowardly things I've ever seen in my entire life. And and they and and they and and, and they, they do now, know who it is now. Yeah, Did horrible. you think that like okay, seeing the video, was he surprised and he just that was a reflex or did he just not care? He didn't care. That's didn't what care. I thought. Just it seemed like he care. had enough time. He I looked at her and he he whatever she said, he he listened. That's true. Because he hit her too square. And that lady broke that old lady's nose. Yeah. What, did you see her two eyes? Yeah. The daughter only got a black eye out of it somehow. It ain't a wonder she didn't get a concussion. I know. That was bad. It it goes back to society, the new America, the way people are. No accountability, no responsibility. People think they can do whatever they want, say whatever they want. And it's okay to have a lifestyle and to have a culture that's so screwed up like that to where they thought that was okay to do. It, it's it, it, it was sickening. That was one of the worst things. Where are they at? I was going to say, was it Georgia? No, 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 no. Where are they at? They haven't caught them. No, they haven't. But they know exactly who it is, though. Yeah, they, they've got Facebook pictures and everything. Yes. It's out on, you know, it's out on social media. I was checking her Facebook page. So what, what was it over? Was it because their chicken wasn't they done? They didn't get enough chicken. Didn't, no, didn't their, chicken was, their chicken was cold and they didn't get enough fries. Oh, that's fries. right. Not enough fries. So they just started whooping so that they, Well, you know how it was. It was probably like, you know, they were really stressed out. It was a busy day. And they're like, look, our chicken was cold. And, you know, they had it came up with that attitude. So that lady's like, man, come on, you know. Yeah. Probably was kind of curt with them. Didn't kiss their butt like they wanted it kissed. Yeah, <laughs> she just, did give them a refund, and then she just started wailing on her. Yeah. You know how this? You know exactly the type yeah. of person. Ridiculous that did that. ass people, and I've seen this, and I saw it a couple of months ago, yeah. and was disgusted, appalled by it. Yeah, went to a place to eat in Montgomery. Was sitting there with my family eating. Of course, this one woman. We was, we was at a Tomatoes Buffet on Atlanta Highway. Yeah, we're sitting there eating. Of course, the lady goes around. She's walking around. She gets the manager to come to her table and said, I want some fresh fried mushrooms. And there is a huge pan of them up there. She made him go fry her out of the back a plate of fried mushrooms. And I was disgusted ill about it. And then on top of the other 600 pieces of chicken that they had out there, she wanted hot, fresh chicken. Does she not know she's at a buffet? I, I, You know what? I started to just go over there and say, ma'am, you're at a damn buffet. Eat what's on here. She really, and the manager obliged and did it. I probably would have just got her, gave her a refund and told her goodbye. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then Melanie was like, don't say nothing, don't say nothing. And I'm like, it, it's sickening. Yeah. That, it, that it is not okay to be like that. Well, at a buffet, they can't spit in your food. David. David. Is that why you like buffets? You know I don't. Really. So you complain. I hate buffets. Well, you know what? I hate buffets. Don't you know why? The only reason I went is because I could eat vegetables. <clears throat> <laughs> um, next. Are we not going to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to address that bullshit. Yeah, uh, we're going to completely so. ignore that. <laughs> okay, let's pretend. So you telling me you did not have any fried chicken? Or, well, I had a couple. Of uh-huh, or fried uh-huh. mushrooms or yeah. cornbread. I had a couple of things. Okay. So. Okay. Have some turnip oh, rolls. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure you have a few. Are you doing? The, are you doing that old school balance out diet? I'm trying to balance my diet. Or like you ate a piece of fried chicken, so you gonna balance it out with a ball of collard greens? Yes. <laughs> but see, that goes back to good and bad. Good and bad. But don't. I want to eat a salad for lunch, and I'll make tomatoes for dinner. You're gonna make tomatoes for dinner? Okay. God. No. But yeah, it really it did it pissed me off, and, and I mean, what is wrong with society? And do, I mean, does it? If you think about it, and I preach this shit all the time, it boils back down to mental health. Are we at a Are we at a place now in America where we need like mental health on every block? Possibly. I mean, what do you think's going on? I think. 
think we're we're definitely at the end of times? I don't know. I think um, we're going through a pretty big change in history. And what you're seeing is the growing pains of everybody, you know, society trying to catch up to that. Okay, Jake, and, and I, and I kind of could go with that. What's the outcome of how to fix it? You can't. It's well, just going to do what it's going to do. So we're going to be like, we're going to act and be and have our lives like this for the rest of our, for it. This well, is it. Values change, man. Well, values, there's no values. Values change. Like, think about the people in the 1800s when the bikini, you know, and like the Victorian area principles and them carrying that over and then a the bikini comes out. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's what we're in? You're kind of seeing that. Is our values are changing. Now, I think what we're seeing, kind of what's got a lot of people outraged, is you got a very vocal minority taking things a little too far. And it's kind of reminding people where their personal stop is at. You know, where it's like, mm -hmm. okay, that's not cool. Well, you got Nambla out there doing what they do. That pizza places. That's true. That's true. It's Spe just speaking of that, for two years, Matthew Finner said he pleaded with authorities to investigate his allegations that a group of fellow congregants at the Word of Faith Fellowship Church had punched, slapped, and choked him to expel his homosexual demons. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry, Matthew, but that's kind of funny, man. Because, you know, that sets up a scene in your head, and it's, it's funny. An Associated Press investigation found that Rutherford County investigators and then-District Attorney Brad Greenway delayed investigating and told Freener, Finner that his only option was to pursue misdemeanor charges against the church members he said assaulted him for nearly two hours. Wow. God, that's a two-hour last one. Wow. <laughs> Evangelical Church and Sanctuary. All right, man. So we got some things to talk about here. All right. See, David's talking about values. Is that which? See, you gotta have to be careful about which values, because there's some things we've improved in, and there's some things we have not improved in. Like, can you imagine that poor man getting just the shit beat out of him for two hours? Because you know I can't. But he might be partial to a little penis. I mean, we live in a just screwed up ass society. So why didn't he just defend himself? Was did it, he accept the beating? Seems seems like he accepted the beating. But what did, it was yeah. it was about four people though, wasn't it? It might have been man. Four people on one. Oh, it two never hours. it never start stopped you or any of us oh, ever just okay. keep this swimming. Right. <laughs> I mean, if you go, you All mean, right. I mean, I, I, I'm perfectly fine with taking ass with him. You better back a lunch. Too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like we're different. Yeah, that's probably actually closer to what happened than anything. Is that it got to a sort of a boiling point with him. And, you know, maybe he was trying to defend himself a bit and being like, it's not yeah, a demon. Could I'm be. just kind of that way. And that's my personal struggle, whatever. And, uh, you but know, you somebody know slapped him and then it was on. Who cares? Who really gives a shit? Obviously, those four men that whipped that ass for that I, I, guess I mean, so. I would get tired. True. They had to take shifts at that point. Man, there's way more uh, other that, big problems. That is that. damn commitment. Did they beat him with the Bible? <sighs> it's possible. 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 Yeah, possible. You know, the only thing I can think of is the, the Boondocks episode. <laughs> wow. <laughs> have y'all seen that? Yeah, I have not. <laughs> Why? Why did all of a sudden I start thinking about uh, the cat box? Are, the, well, are we going to try to address that? Yeah. No, I don't want to address it, but it is funny. Thick wood. Well, Thick well, well you just. I, I had a I had a moment earlier today where we have a friend that we think a lot of, we love very much. That that sometimes you just really want to beat him. Like almost like that that gentleman there, you know, we want to beat the demons out of him. Yeah. Beat the demon, beat the demon. <laughs> yeah, and then you know, I just had the idea maybe we let him eat cat poop poop out of Jake's box because uh -oh. he needs a beating. <laughs> well, I'm sure the cats would be happy to do <laughs> That was the highlight of my afternoon. God, oh, that's horrible. Who's that just is joking? Horrible. Now that would never yeah. happen. No, but why did y'all keep talking about? Are you serious? 
Are you serious? <laughs> I don't know. You scare us. <laughs> because you say that. Oh, yeah, because we thought you were really serious. See, see what, we're, what we're, you know, we're kind of in a groove now with who, you know, we kind of do our thing. We're in a set schedule. And Sean Sellers is notorious for inviting, like, a group of people yes, and not he telling is. He's anyone. like the godfather of inviting anybody in. What's so wrong with it? I, I think There's a lot good. wrong with it. Because I don't like people, man. Yes, I can't stand people. I don't think that's a secret. Shit. Don't bring nobody. Well, I love people. David, is that a secret among your friends that I don't like people? No, you don't like people. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Yes, I think you, you do, don't Jake. like people. You do, Jake. though. Yes. And he says that, but why? he gets his feeling hurt when, when, somebody, when somebody thinks that he don't like them. That's and he true. does like them. I'm just, I'm just uh, providing counterpoints. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you well, mean? I'm confused now. I'm lost now, too. Yes, I'm lost, too. The forks are in this now, right? Yes. Yeah. We're an yes. hour in, guys. We're, yes. So y'all know what time it is. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us this week. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or having a problem or issue that you'd like for us to fix. I've got email. concerns. Why do you hate Rob Lowe so much? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you and Bigfoot? I mean, he's just a washed up ass actor, man. God, dog. You and Bigfoot just want to beat the shit out yes, of Rob Lowe. I can't stand him. Weak ass Rob Lowe. Can you imagine David and Bigfoot in a tag team match yes. just beating him with a chair? God, I, I feel sorry for Rob Lowe. I, I'm looking forward to the show. Yes. <laughs> we'll have to all watch the show and get back with you. <laughs> David's just going to cuss and scream. When did the show TV. debut? It's I have no idea. Uh, there's a clip on YouTube now. Okay. Some point. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No. Go ahead. You. So I mean, yeah. So we're good. So, Sean, tell everybody good night. Hey, appreciate everybody listening to the show. Thanks. I appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Jake. Good night. I hate all of you. Thank you. Yeah. Good, good night. night. Bye. Bye.